All right, good evening. This is the 6 p.m. workshop in English about affordable health care and government assistance. There is a 7 p.m. workshop that will be in Spanish. Buenas tardes, este taller es en inglés sobre los uh, beneficios de gobierno y uh, salud y atención uh, médica. Y a las 7 tenemos una presentación en español, a las 7. So esto estará en inglés. My name is Sean Scaria, and I am joined by Samantha Path uh, from the Central American Refugee Center. Welcome to Evergreen Charter School's online workshops. Tonight's presentation will give you information about healthcare and available government assistance. Nassau County has been especially hit hard uh, with COVID. It is important for families to have healthcare options, especially now. This workshop will give you information to take action to protect you and your family. There are documents that you can download on the website, as well as from um, the uh, webinar control panel as well, in the handout section. The presenter will be presenting for around 20 to 25 minutes, and there will be a question and answer session for the last five to 10 minutes. You can ask a question by posting a question in the question box or chat box in the go to webinar control panel. All right, thank you so much, Samantha. Let's have it from here. Great, thank you so much. So, oops, and then it knocks me back out. There we are. Uh, so we're gonna talk a bit about healthcare. So some of the main questions we'll cover today are what your rights are, some very basic rights in accessing healthcare. Uh, what if you don't have health insurance? What impact your immigration status will have? Uh, as well as uh, some basic stuff about accessing medical services during the corona uh, coronavirus pandemic. So uh, some of the basic rights that every person has, regardless of immigration status, insurance coverage, uh, are that you can get emergency care, right? So if you are in a car accident, for example, and you need to be rushed to the hospital, you have a right to get that emergency care, whether you have health insurance or if you're and documented, none of that will prevent you to get insurance. There are federal laws that protect you uh, so that any person who is brought into an emergency room is stabilized and treated, regardless of that insurance status or ability to pay. Uh, however, it doesn't mean necessarily that you are guaranteed uh, coverage in the treatment costs. And we'll talk a bit more on uh, you know, the financial aspects as well later. Another basic right is to privacy, right? So you do not have to worry about your personal information being shared. There are federal laws that protect, uh, you know, your information, your personal information, your name, different, uh, you know, data points like that. And you don't have to worry about your immigration st status being disclosed or shared with uh, immigration agencies. And we'll talk, you know, more on that later as well. But basic. Uh, privacy is guaranteed to everyone. One factor um, to consider though that a healthcare worker might ask you for a photo ID in order to confirm that you are the person on the medical records and just, uh, you know, that sort of security in and of itself, right? To make sure that the person getting the treatment is the person on the records. And the only time that your immigration status is a factor and is relevant is if you're applying for your own insurance, right? So if I'm applying for my daughter's insurance, it doesn't matter what my immigration status is, right? If she is eligible, she is eligible independent of me. My status is only a factor for my insurance. Another uh, pretty general right that everyone has access to is language access. So what that means is that you should be receiving information and treatment in the language you're most comfortable communicating. Right? So if I don't speak English as my primary language, I'm going to be really confused and not know what's happening if someone is only speaking English to me and explaining medical terms and things like that in a language that I don't speak. Right? So if there isn't a bilingual staff member or an in-person interpreter at a hospital or whatever medical facility, you have the right to have uh, interpretation through the phone, right? The hospitals uh, are by law required to provide that, right? You have a right to have that information, uh, right? If I take my daughter to the hospital and 
she speaks English and I don't, it doesn't really help me understand what's happening in my child's uh, you know, health situation. So we're gonna move on to some general things about what happens if I don't have health insurance. So one of the um, few programs that undocumented people are eligible for are emergency Medicaid, right, in terms of government programs. Uh, people who are low income and don't qualify for Medicaid because of their immigration status, right? It's they are eligible for Medicaid, except they are undocumented or, or don't meet the immigration status eligibility requirements, then they can qualify for emergency Medicaid. Uh, it's free, however, it only covers the cost of emergency care. And so that might be, uh, you know, a car accident or something like that, or in this time, coronavirus in New York, uh, they are having emergency Medicaid cover undocumented immigrants getting uh, testing and treatment for that um, as part of this whole pandemic. And so um, you can also pre-apply for emergency Medicaid so that before there's an emergency that comes up, you can get that application complete and it will be valid for 12 months after you apply. Right, so if nothing happens in those 12 months, fine, no worries. But if something does, you have that uh, already established for you. It also goes back three months prior to when you apply. So if I apply today, the three months before today, May 4th, uh, would count, right? So if you have to apply for it after an emergency happens, right? Or if maybe you find out, a month or so after an emergency that you were eligible. And then here you can see a link uh, that has a bit more information about the emergency Medicaid coverage. And so that's something that you can just see right there. And so if you aren't eligible for emergency Medicaid, Right. Maybe you don't meet the income requirements to be eligible, but you still can't afford, you know, to just pay for any doctor out of pocket. Uh, there are a lot of options at health centers. Local community health centers offer a high quality medical attention with lower costs. Right. So some places have a sliding scale fee. And so that means that depending on your income level, they'll slide how much you owe. Uh, so if you have a lower income, then your payment would be lower. If you have a higher income, your payment would be higher, right? And so these are based off the number of people in your household and your monthly income, right? So if it's me, my partner, and our two children, we will be a household of four. And if we make, you know, very little money, we would have very little to pay, right? Maybe like $20 for a doctor's visit sort of thing. If we make, you know, several thousand more, maybe we'd have to pay 30, 40, $50 for a visit, that sort of thing. And so it really depends on what type of visit and all of that, but uh, there are plenty of options available for different situations and, and coverage. Uh, something important to consider is that all children are eligible for health insurance coverage in New York, regardless of their immigration status. So if you are below age 19, right, so 18 and under, uh, you might be eligible for Medicaid. Uh, but if you're not eligible for Medicaid, you can also the child can also get uh, a plan that's called Child Health Plus. And so here I have a link that you guys can all see. Uh, that has a bit more information about eligibility and cost of Child Health Plus. And so, oops, it scrolled really far down. All right, so here you can see a bit of a graph based off, uh, you know, the fee for insurance and the cost. And it's based off income, so or uh, yeah, monthly income per people in the household. So if we had four people, and we made $3,493 each month, we would have free insurance. If we make a bit more, it goes up a little bit more. It also has the thresholds for Medicaid for children to qualify for that. 
Um, so that's a good piece of information to, to go through as well. Also, as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, there is a special enrollment period. Uh, so in health insurance, sometimes you can only get insurance because of certain events, right? If you get married, if you lose your job, different big changes like that. And so there's a, oops, there's a special enrollment period uh, for uninsured New Yorkers to apply for coverage through the New York State of Health is the, the statewide healthcare program and how they you know, have insurance coverage. And so there's a special period that ends on May 15th. So that's coming up, right? We're already on May 4th. So if you are uninsured and want to look into that, I would highly recommend it uh, so that you can see what is available to you because it's always going to be cheaper to have insurance rather than paying out of pocket. Uh, if you lost employer coverage, uh, you should apply for insurance within 60 days through the New York State of Health. Uh, you also, you know, if you have lost your job, you might be eligible for Medicaid or the Essential Plan, which is a cheaper uh, health insurance, right, if you don't qualify for that and can't quite pay for other programs. Uh, so that's an option of, you know, we all know that many families are in a very difficult time. A lot of people are losing their job, and if their work provided health insurance, they're losing that as well. So this is a great program uh, that goes to the 15th. And the employer-based insurance, you can get that 60 days after losing coverage, right? So that might not necessarily be the same uh, timeline as the May 15th deadline. Another big question that many people have is about their immigration status. Many people are very uh, nervous to go to doctors to you know potentially have to say whether they are documented undocumented uh, fear about your immigration status should not prevent you from getting medical help uh, doctors nurses the reception all of the medical staff they want you to get treatment they don't they're not going to report you they don't want you to be afraid they want you to get the help that you need uh, so they do not report you or give information about you to the immigration agencies like ICE or USCIS. They also aren't going to track your immigration status. You don't have to disclose it on certain form, on any forms. The only time you really have to indicate your immigration status is to be eligible for um, insurance plans, right, in, in ins health insurance. So that's the only time that you really have to, oh, this went really fast. Oh, no. There we go. Knocked a button on my mouse and everything went out of whack. But yeah, so you do not have to disclose your immigration status. They should not ask you for it. And even if they do, you, you do not have to tell them. All right, if there's a, a question about your social security number, you just indicate that you do not have a social security number and that's it, they don't inquire further. Um, because of your immigration status, you might not be eligible for certain health insurances, right? For example, Medicaid, you have to have you know, certain status, right? If I'm undocumented, I won't be eligible for Medicaid. Um, however, I still will have access to high quality and low cost healthcare through different clinics and health centers. And so one of those uh, health centers is the Family Health Center. Uh, there are a number in Nassau County. There's one uh, right on Main Street in Hempstead. So that would probably be a very helpful location for many. And so this is a link to their website, right? So here you can see they have a pop-up uh, that talks about on-site and telehealth appointments. So we're gonna talk about that in a moment, but you can see health centers are open. You can call and get an appointment. You can do it online. So it's very important that you, you know, see and access it. Right, if you need interpretation up here there or uh, translation, they have different languages available. We've got different locations. Um, this is one of we'll talk about it in a bit, but this is a, a location for coronavirus testing, uh, telehealth, all of that. There's a variety of different services that they provide, right? So if I need to go there for dental or even just an annual checkup. Uh, the family health centers are able to provide and meet those needs, right? So here we can see a map of, of where they have places. 
And so we're going to talk a bit about the testing, right? So we saw on that website that family health centers are one of the locations uh, for free testing. And so there are a number of places in Nassau County. There are also a variety in Suffolk County, but we're, we'll focus on Nassau. Um, Hempstead at the Main Street Family Health Center, Elmont, Westbury, and Freeport also have testing facilities. These are open from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, so it's on the earlier side, right? It definitely will take some scheduling to get there if you're, you're working or anything like that. They are by appointment only. So that's something important to consider. I've heard uh, in some different meetings that there was someone who went to an urgent care, right? They couldn't go to one of these testing facilities for some reason. So they went to a local urgent care and got a test and their insurance covered a very small amount of it and the person had to cover like $200 or something. I can't remember, but it was a significant amount. Uh, so if you call and schedule an appointment and go to the designated spot, it will be free, right? We have funding in the state of New York to support people so that money is not an issue when it comes to getting testing for coronavirus. We want people to be healthy. We want people to know, uh, you know, what the situation is, right? Am I going to contaminate others in my household? What, what do I need to do? Um, so please make sure to schedule an appointment or if you are you know, not able to get to one of these centers, talk to your doctor or at the local health centers and different things like that so that you can see where else you can get testing. But it is important to uh, go through the proper channels so that you get it for free and are not responsible for covering it. And so here at the bottom, you can see the phone number 516-396-7500. And that's where you can make an appointment. Another factor that we know is very worrisome for many in the community is whether having a benefit or anything free from the government will have an impact on their immigration status. So it's very important to know that getting tested or treatment for coronavirus will not have a negative impact on your immigration status. So there's a lot of news about public charge in uh, you know, all of the news channels. I see it bouncing around Facebook, things like that. So public charge tests are not going to weigh uh, coronavirus testing and treatment in a negative manner, right? So I don't have to worry about getting testing or treated and go, oh no, what's, what is this going to do to my immigration case? Do not worry, it has no negative impact and the government acknowledges that this is a very big public health issue and they want people to get the proper testing and treatment, right? So it's, it's very important to um, have that information so that you're not making uh, medical decisions based off your immigration status. And so then here we have the locations, uh, the testing sites, I have the flyer in English, and then I'll show you in uh, Spanish and Haitian Creole. You'll also see these flyers in the handouts section, and it'll also be linked on the uh, Evergreen Charter School website along with this video later. So you can access this information uh, whenever you need to. Uh, but we see here, right, the main symptoms are fever, cough, shortness of breath. So if you or someone in your family, household, has one of these, has these symptoms, call, make an appointment, your immigration status or your insurance status are not important. They do not care. They just want you to be healthy and safe. Uh, so here you can see it in Spanish and in Creole. So we talked a bit about how to uh, get tested, right? Where you can get tested and different tips for that. Uh, in relation to coronavirus. So let's talk a bit more on what if your family member is sick or you are sick, but it's not because of coronavirus, right? People are still injured and ill and have diseases and problems and medical challenges outside of this pandemic, right? So it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, the main thing is as much as possible, you want to limit going to the doctor in person. 
So that way you aren't exposed to germs, you're not bringing germs into your household, you're not bringing germs into the doctor's office, right? There's less crossing and contamination. So one of the ways that people are able to still get medical attention uh, while avoiding that in-person contact is through what's called telehealth. So that's where you talk with a doctor by phone or video call and you explain what your medical problem is and they give you help. Uh, so for example, months ago, right before all of this, I've done that before when I had a sinus infection. I just call, tell them what's happening. And for my situation, he just prescribed some medicine, right? It's just like going to the doctor, only they don't look inside my nose, right? Easy enough. And so like we saw before on the Family Health Center page, there's a pop-up about telehealth, and they also have a, a page here that has the instructions of how to request an appointment, right? You can call, you can go online, very easy. And they also have a video in English and Spanish so that you can learn a bit more about what to expect. So that's a really great resource that I recommend you check out. Um, here they also have some different emergency numbers so that, uh, you know, maybe going to a telehealth is not the right step. You know, maybe you really do need to go to something more urgent, right? Of just a video call with a doctor isn't always going to be uh, exactly what is needed. So they give some more resources here, um, including the coronavirus hotline and the call center. So use those resources as well. It's a really great um, connection to those hotlines. And so we also have some additional resources here for you, including the Curacin website. And so here on our website, we've got uh, a wider variety of resources uh, so that you can, let's see if it loads, get all the help that you need. So under this tab of our work, you'll see online resources and you just click there. Right, so there are a number of different uh, resource guides that have accesses to uh, food pantries and information about you know uh, how electricity and utilities and different um, you know public needs like that how they are responding right of not cutting off people's power or their heat or their water if bills aren't paid uh, so there's a lot of great resources in those uh, resource guides. We also have some English language learning resources so that while you're at home, you can practice as well as some citizenship prep. And then on our Facebook pages, we have different workshops available throughout, uh, you know, different days of the week. We're doing any number of, of topics, uh, you know, whether it's related to coronavirus or job seeking and finding employment or immigration workshops we are we are always sharing resources there we also have our facebook page where you can uh, you know, find those those workshops we're doing facebook live videos regularly and then i also wanted to include the nassau county office of hispanic affairs website because they're providing a lot of resources in english and in spanish so that will be very helpful to many families and they have uh, different Many different topics really is what it comes down to. So they have a lot of coronavirus resources and labor resources, so you can get information there. Uh, they also have you know, updates about healthcare access and testing. So that's also a really good resource because there are regularly uh, updated information and, and new testing sites available. So you can check out more there. And they also have a bilingual website too, so that you can get your information how you need it. And there's their Facebook as well. Uh, they're sharing videos and, and different images so that people can access it and get the flyers that they need. Health and Welfare Council of Long Island is another great resource. Uh, they are working very hard uh, in many topics and the coronavirus pandemic is, is one of their, um, you know, emergency pandemic response things. But in general, they have a very helpful program where they help people enroll in insurance, health insurance. 
And so you can connect with uh, what's called a health insurance navigator, and they'll help you, you know, navigate the system, right? See what you're eligible for, uh, the cost and different financial factors of health insurance coverage. So that's their phone number there. Uh, and that's a really great resource. At the moment, I don't know what their capacities are, uh, given everything that's happening with the pandemic. But if you think you're eligible for health insurance, they're very helpful and able to, um, okay. Um, and help everyone out. And so let's see, one final thing is uh, the New York Immigration has this great uh, welcome health healthcare poster. And so this is a multiple page poster that uh, is also in the handout section you'll be able to access later. And it is, oh, it's loading over here. And so it's bilingual in English and Spanish. And it has a lot of very helpful uh, tips about knowing your rights, right? So a lot of what we covered, but it goes further into depth. So today I just wanted to give you some basic information, uh, but they have a lot more of the, the general wide ranging healthcare information. So I definitely recommend taking a look. Uh, it has a lot of uh, helpful questions and answers that you should take a look at, right? Of what happens if I can't afford uh, health insurance, right? So there's this program here called Charity Care. And so that is a very helpful option if you can't afford a bill at a hospital, right? Maybe you weren't eligible for emergency Medicaid, so you are responsible for the whole emergency room bill or whatever you were there for, you can talk to them and ask for this charity care. And that is in all hospitals in New York and they're required to help all low income people pay for their medical care. So that's a very helpful resource to look into. Okay, so there is a lot of information in here. You know, what if I have an emergency? What are the steps? How do I know if I qualify? So this is a, a very helpful resource. So take a look at it when you get the chance. Uh, and to close out the presentation part of this uh, workshop and you know, information session, uh, if you have any questions, you can contact the Office for New Americans. They have a hotline to help everyone. The number is 1-800-566-7636. And you can ask them questions about a wide range of topics, right? Whether it's about coronavirus, where to get testing, uh, general healthcare questions, right? They are a very wide ranging office that's there to help the new American population, right? The immigrants in our community. Um, you know, maybe you have questions about where you can get uh, immigration resources, right? If you have questions about immigration topics, you can also reach out to us at Garrison, right? Our main uh, mission is providing immigration legal services. And so we have uh, all of our staff members working from home. We're, we're here to help. So you can reach out to us. And if you have other general questions and you just don't know where to go with them, reach out and, and contact them and try and get in touch with me. I'm Samantha. I work as our immigrant community navigator. I guess this would have been a good thing to say at the beginning, but oh well, you live and you learn. And so it's one of those programs where I'm working to help the community and cover what you need covered, right? Whether it's knowing more about healthcare access or unemployment or renters' rights, uh, you know, we really want to provide information that is helpful to the community. So if you have a problem, and you don't know where to go, you can contact the Office for New Americans hotline, or you can reach out to us at Caresen, and we're happy to help however we can. Right? We know this is a really difficult time for many, and we're here to serve you guys. So thank you so much for your time, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the question chat box thing. If you have any questions, um, please, like Samantha said, um, you can post them now. Um, but in the meanwhile, I just want to say that was really informative. There's a lot that I learned, and I've been through a lot of these workshops. Um, a lot of those resources that you post, some of those online resources are, are, are really helpful as well, so thank you. Um, so if we don't have any questions, 
Um, to the close, uh, it is important to get the facts, especially during this crisis. There is assistance available for families as Samantha has shown. Um, and I encourage families to access these resources that they need. Uh, this session has been recorded and will be available on the website for viewing. Uh, you can check the archived video section on www.ecsworkshops.org and all the handouts that um, Samantha had there will be uploaded as well. We do have more workshops scheduled for this week. There is a workshop on how to apply for uh, unemployment benefits on Thursday at 6 p.m. for the English workshop and the Spanish workshop at 7 p.m. Uh, Samantha will be uh, hosting that as well and presenting on that topic, which is really important uh, during this uh, pandemic. So please join us for this workshop. Wednesday? Uh, thir May 6th, Thursday. The 6th is Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday. Sorry. Yeah, I was like, oh no, just. <laughs> May 6th, <six>, sorry. <laughs> May 6th, sorry. Thanks for that correction. <laughs> Um, I, I want to thank Samantha of Half and Kattison for presenting on this topic to the community. Thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you so much.